Good evening. Welcome to the API's Iron Government Program for Tuesday, 4th May 2021. Iron Government brings to you the latest on government's plans, programs, projects and policies. I am Keisha Woodley. Just ahead on this evening's program, Governor General Her Excellency Dame Susan Duggan tours a number of agencies and shelters. The Volcano Emergency Relief Fund, VERV, supports persons displaced after the Lasso Frey eruptions. Venezuelan ship brings relief supplies and more aid arrives from the private sector in Martinique. These details are coming up in a moment after News Watch with Janice St. Philip. Good evening. I am Janice St. Philip. This is Newswatch. The National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, denies accusations of the hoarding of bed mattresses leveled at the organization. This follows a visit by the Governor General, Her Excellency, Dame Susan Duggan, to the NEMO warehouse at Camden Park on Monday, May 3rd, 2021. During her visit, photographs of mattresses being stored at the warehouse were taken and disseminated by local media who had accompanied Her Excellency on her tour of the facility. This display has resulted in widespread social media allegations that Nemo is engaging in the hoarding of bed mattresses and supplies, meant for evacuees throughout St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Nemo categorically deny these allegations and states as follows. Distribution of mattresses is an ongoing process. To date, some 1,500 mattresses have been delivered to 86 shelters that have been activated. Initially, cots were supplied, but most of these have now been replaced. 550 mattresses were delivered to families over the past few days. A 40-foot container of mattresses bought through the Ministry of Finance and Economic Planning was received on Friday, April 30th, offloaded on Saturday, May 1st, and delivered mainly to persons in private shelters. The mattresses seen in the photos being circulated with the Governor General in the background were received late on Saturday, May 1st, and are single mattresses, which are being distributed upon request. Monday, May 3rd, 2021's delivery of mattresses were hampered by the inclement weather, but efforts to distribute mattresses to those in need continues in earnest. Nemo wishes to assure the public that it has no interest in withholding supplies necessary for the comfort of those who have been displaced due to the eruption of the La Soufre volcano. Nemo and its stakeholders will continue to coordinate the response to this natural emergency in accordance with humanitarian principles. The Governor General of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Dame Susan Duggan, was on tour the Woolleywood side of the island visiting three shelters and warehouses as the government continues to cater to the needs of citizens affected by La Soufre. The tour, which began at Thomas Saunders Secondary School, stops at the GPU Secondary School. The storage locations in Camden Park and concluded at the Golden Years Activity Centre in Pembroke. During the tour on Monday, May 3rd, 2021, the Governor General thanked the many volunteers and praised the work of service providers, VINLEC and CWSA, during the period of crisis. Dame Duggan also expressed gratitude to the regional and international bodies for ably assisting SVG. Nemo and all of the supporting agencies who have contributed tremendously, I can't thank them enough. I also, at this point, would also um, thank the management and staff, the Central Water and Sewage Authority. They have worked hard to ensure that the water supply is restored 
also the management and staff at the St. Vincent Electricity Services. They have also given us our supply of electricity. We've had very little disruption. We can't thank them enough. And of course, ACP Benjamin, we have to thank the commissioner, senior management, and the staff of the constabulary. You've always been there, even before the volcanic eruption. And your, your officials are placed in the danger zones to ensure that we are safe, sometimes at great risk, because in the areas in the red zone, you never know what will happen. So we have to thank you for all of this. Acting Supervisor in the Department of Vector Control Unit, Shamanti Laban, is calling on Vincentians to pay close attention to their water containers. Laban spoke with the API on the work the department is doing to keep disease-carrying vectors under control. The Acting Supervisor noted that given the disruption of water due to the volcanic eruption, many persons have turned to storing water using a range of receptacles. Laban stated that a contaminated water container can lead to life-threatening diseases. If it is that you suspect it has been contaminated by, the ro by a rodent, or it's best that you not utilize the water. Hence, it's important that you always keep your water sources secure and you protect them because it's not something that you can see with your naked eye. I mean, you can see the droppings. You can see if there are droppings inside of it right or wrong it or whatever the case is but it's the urine that actually um, transmits for example leptospirosis right so if it is that the this particular rodent um, is transmitting is a carrier for this disease is a vector for this disease and it contaminates the water you will not be able to see it with your naked eye the University of the West Indies, UWI, and Whiteboard Labs, WBL, of India signed a formal Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, to improve access to tertiary education and training for the people of India and the West Indies through a virtual center of excellence. The official signing took place on Monday, May 3, 2021, on an online streaming platform. Vice Chancellor of the University of the West Indies, Sir Hilary Beckles, spoke on the UWI's vision in signing this MOU agreement. Our strategic plan is, uh, is built upon three fundamental pillars. Access, speaking specifically to access to new and innovative uh, programs and, and systems of learning alignment with our industry partners and agility in the search for solutions and partnerships that will enable the fulfillment of our strategic vision. The focus on business and technology-based courses will excite our students and our customers and, and demonstrate our commitment in, the, in real and practical ways to the concepts within our plan of access, alignment, and agility. Whiteboard Labs and the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding is an effort to produce advanced education in a technology-driven environment, as well as strengthening ties between and among different countries in the world who share common goal of spreading the multifaceted needs of education. Thanks for watching. I am Janice St. Philip. Stay tuned as the API program continues with Kisha Woodley. The spread of viral infections including the flu and COVID-19 by practicing proper hand washing. Follow these simple steps. Remove all jewelry before washing hands. Wet hands using running water. Place liquid soap in hand. Circulate using rotational movements, interlace fingers 
and repeat switching hands. Wash back of fingers, rotating them in the palms. Wash fingertips, rotating them in palms. Wash thumbs using rotational movements. Thoroughly wash hands down to the wrist. Rinse hands. Dry with clean tissue. Turn off tap using tissue. Use tissue to open door and discard in bin. A simple act can make a huge difference. Stop the spread of viral infections including the flu and COVID-19 by practicing proper hand washing. This is a message from the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment. Thanks for staying with us. Welcome back. This country's Governor General, Her Excellency Dame Susan Duggan, recently visited a number of agencies and shelters. The tour highlighted the operations and support provided to displaced persons. We learn more in this report. This country's Governor General, Her Excellency Dame Susan Duggan, on Friday, April 30, 2021, visited the National Emergency Organization's NEMO headquarters, evacuee shelters at Calico and Fair Hall, the World Food Program at Arnes Vale, and the World Central Kitchen in Diamond. The Governor General saw firsthand the support system in place in the relief and recovery efforts here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, as this country now grapples with the aftermath of several explosive eruptions of the Lassifre volcano. Her Excellency Mrs. Duggan met with the team at NEMO and took the opportunity to encourage everyone involved in the operations. So I would just like you to know that I appreciate what you're doing. I realize that it's going to be challenging because you cannot have perfection. You can only do your best. And I encourage you to keep up the high standard. And what I see here is a means of communicating, which is so important, so that everybody knows what's going on. I also recognize that you would have done a tremendous amount of preparation before you actually had the event taking place. And that is laudable because you must have proper planning in place. You must have the processes at play in place. And you have the resources to accommodate what you are doing. I know that our partners in the region, the regional governments, and I must mention here the governors general in the different islands, they have been very supportive. I also know that international community is rallying around us and we are going through a difficult period. But, as I've always said, Vincentians are a resilient people and it's in times like these that we show our innate compassion, our caring, our love for each other and we'll go the extra mile to support each other. I know that you're busy and you have a lot of activities going on. I hope that at some point we'll see a little decentralization because you have quite a number of persons, not in the <coughs> red zone, but in the orange zone, who would need your support. And I've been getting feedback because um, so many persons have called to say that they are well taken care of and they're getting the water. You will have a few pockets of resistance and a few people who will never get enough. But we will always, we will always remember that the work this team is doing is one that we have to laud. It is important, it is significant, and we can thank you. Members of the team also had a brief moment to share how they functioned within the NEOC.
Not too far away, another arm of Nemo engages the public through its call center. This was established to facilitate a more efficient response to those in need. And the Governor General saw just how activities within this area were being executed. I can see what you're doing. It's very, very important because communication is always significant when we have disasters, when we have crises. And it takes a lot of coordination and the management to meet whatever activities and exercises that are taking place. So this morning, I am encouraging you to be the best you can be. Remember you're interfacing with the public and always to be on your guard. The manner in which you conduct the exercise is always significant because you know sometimes when people call in, they're frustrated. Some of them may be angry. And so you being at the other end of the receiver is the one who would actually get that anger and that frustration thrown at you. So you always have to be mentally prepared, courteous, take the information and give whatever feedback you can in a professional way. And I'm sure you are doing that. I know I have confidence that you will be doing that. And that's why you are chosen to do what you're doing here. So I can only ask you this morning to continue the good work that you're doing. The tour continued and the next stop was on site the World Food Program at Arnest Vale. The Governor General met with the delegation there and learned more about their humanitarian efforts. Given the magnitude of events, we had yesterday an aircraft arrive that brought five more of these storage units um, and some additional equipment, generators, these um, offices, you see the, the sort of prefab office at the, at the entrance there, and other equipment to allow this hub to be operational. We've also brought in some trucks and forklifts and, and some light vehicles to support the overall uh, relief distribution process. My pleasure. So we have established on the island 33 land base and 17 sea base uh, uh, task force members from Trinidad Tobago Defense Force. And um, so far we have been assisting with the distribution and offloading of items on the port. Um, we have assisted also with the construction of the tents. And wherever we are needed to apply extra manpower this time, we are therefore up, um, sending out our troops. Uh, today you can see a combination of the CDRU and the Trinidad Tobago Defense Force Task Force team constructing another MSU. And as when we when you continue and, and you go and walk along, you'll see the different areas we have set up. So I invite you to take a walk with us, ma'am, if you so desire. So ensure that we start to get things, some of these things distributed to the individuals that need them. It's about getting what they want to them exactly when they want it. Well, it takes a lot of coordination. <laughs> yes. I was saying to Miss Forbes. Uh, this just now a few minutes ago that the enormity of the task is almost mind-boggling <laughs> yes, because we have so many persons we have to deal with not only in the shelters no, but elsewhere and we must not forget those persons who are hosting the evacuees yes. they too probably will be going through some hardships yes, and we must bear in mind that they will have some needs so I guess that um, at the end of the day, everybody would be duly served. Definitely. And this, this is a fantastic operation. And I thank you for your support. I thank your government and your people for their contribution. Thank you to the people of St. Vincent for the hospitality that has been shown thus far to us. Accommodation-wise and all the facilities that we have needed thus far has been more than forthcoming through Nemo and all the other agencies. The Commissioner of Police has been significant in his support to us, as well as the Cadet Force and the other agencies that we've been working with thus far. The next focus was the World Central Kitchen in Diamond, and Her Excellency Mrs. Duggan stirred her way into the kitchen, led by an official of the WCK. You have the experience, and that experience will come to bear on how you deliver to us. It takes a lot of coordination, but 
in times of disaster. It's amazing how humankind can get together and do what is necessary. So it, it's our survival, it's our comfort. Having food is a basic requirement and once you are able to assist in that area, we are more than happy to have you to get some kind of ready. Thank you so much for, for having us assist. And, and you hit what you're saying too is in, if we can have someone not have to worry about food, then they can focus on something else important that they need to focus on too. That's so, right. Yeah, you, you're really describing why we do what we do. So thank you. It was now time to journey to the shelters, and the first was the Kalikwa Anglican School. The Governor General met with the principal and shelter manager there and discussed a range of matters, including upholding COVID-19 protocols, facing challenges through effective communication, and engaging students meaningfully, among other matters. So we have things in terms of the children they are engaged. What we need more is some more activity for the elderly because I'm concerned because they're eating well. The meals are very good, excellent meals, and I'm a bit concerned with that, that they might get a little lethargic and put on weight, and I don't want them to have any complications because some of them have diabetes and hypertension. And but it, yes, daily, very good. Thank you so much. Daily we have temperature checks. The nurses come, the nurses from the red zone, walk here, and they will take their pressure, make sure that they have the medication and at times the doctor will come in and take care of them, so they're well taken care of. So Nemo, Nemo is doing a fantastic job. Am I reading yes. that from you? Yes. And yes. You, your supplies come in regularly? Yes. You have resources, you have your teachers, and, and they have, have a shift system? Yes. And they're working well? Very good. And the children are comfortable? Yes, they are. They're taken care of. And the mothers, some of them, the fathers, they go to work yes, and they return to the shelter. To the shelter. And I note that this shelter is a model. It's recently yes. refurbished. It is beautiful. And I know as um, a teacher, you will pay attention to that because we have to try and maintain the structures. Now, what is of concern is that you have children of different ages and that we hope that they are engaged fully and not waste too much time because this um, disaster is impacting on their education and you will know how important yes. that is. The final evacuee shelter to be visited by the Governor General on that day was the Fair Hall Government School, and Her Excellency shed some light on the design of the school and its accommodation, since it's relatively new. Well, I, I must say I'm very happy. Fair Hall School was configured to be a shelter, and you notice you have several ramps, yeah. the way it is structured. You have the facilities in place as well to accommodate perhaps um, when you relocate persons from their homes. Logistically, it's easy to work with, you know, the Fair Hall School. And um, I know that NEMO, the organization, has been doing a tremendous job. And I hope you give them that feedback because they have been distributing, they have been coordinating, they have been managing all that is happening. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we, 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 I am saying it publicly because I realize it's a monumental task. We have been given some support from Government House, quite a bit of support because we tend to work with the disabled and the elderly and persons who really do need assistance and if you have persons like that here at Fair Hall then you should let us know. Now we have one such disabled and she they came to remove her but she was so comfortable here that she said she doesn't want to be moved so I don't know if when you go to her what you would do but if it's anything we have no problem keeping her once once you yeah. have no problem, we have no, she is comfortable. So far we have a displaced teacher who is here with us and he is teaching the grade 5 and 
six, those for the CPA, he's, he took out those group of children with our consent and he's teaching them academics also. So he's doing maths and science and then we have another teacher again who is this place and she is doing the language aspect of it, the composition to make sure that they have their writing portfolio ready for that time, when, it, when that time comes. The Governor General made a donation to both shelters and also packaged copies of the author Kathy Martin's book, The Botanical Gardens. Her Excellency Mrs. Duggan urged the children to read and learn more about this country. And um, I hope it would be useful because I know you can never have enough of the necessities that you will find in, in the book. And um, if there's anything else that you would like us to give to you, you will let us know. And um, we work in conjunction with Neem. We never give you unless we get your play from them. On Monday, the Governor General continued her tour and visited the shelters at the J.P. Eustace and the Thomas Saunders Secondary Schools, the Golden Year Center at Cane Grove and the Camden Park Warehouse. Reporting for the API, I am Sheridan Lewis. When Iron Government returns, the Volcano Emergency Relief Fund, VOV, supports persons displaced after the last of fray eruptions. Welcome to Opportunity Calls, where we inform you on vacancies within the government service, opportunities for training, scholarships, and much more. Stay tuned as an opportunity might just be calling you. The Government of Japan is inviting applications for Japanese government scholarships from citizens of St. Vincent and the Grenadines who wish to pursue postgraduate study at Japanese universities under the Japanese Government MEX Scholarship Program. Application deadline May 31, 2021. For more information on the scholarship and how to apply, please visit our Facebook page at API SVG. As we battle the unseen enemy, COVID-19, remember to be kind to each other, be a good neighbor, help someone less fortunate than yourself, be your brother's keeper. Together, we can overcome COVID-19. A message by the National Reconciliation Advisory Committee. Welcome back. The Mustique Charitable Trust, along with sister organizations, recently launched their Volcano Emergency Relief Fund, VOV. So far, this initiative has brought much-needed support to individuals and families displaced in the wake of the Lassafre volcano eruptions. Pavin Oliver has the story. As many persons continue to suffer the impacts of the Lassafre volcano, Several organizations locally, regionally, and internationally have already stepped up to assist persons in need. Water, food, and other necessities were shipped to this country from our OECS and CARICOM neighbors, as well as from both French and Spanish-speaking friends. Locally, several organizations have pulled resources from around the globe to assist with the local relief efforts. One such entity is the Mustique Volcano Emergency Relief Fund, also known as Mustique Verf. Mustique Verf is a collaboration of the three counterparts of the Mustique Charitable Community, which includes the Mustique Charitable Trust, the Mustique Charitable Foundation, and the UK Friends of the Mustique Charitable Trust. Speaking with the API on Monday was Administrative Director of the Mustique Charitable Trust, Dulari Malcolm, who said fundraising ventures were initiated immediately after the first violent eruption of the Lasso Frey volcano with the three counterparts of the Mustique Charitable Community raising around $1.5 million. Malcolm said the entity will work in tandem with the government and other volunteer groups to provide assistance to those in need. She said currently, the focus is to provide assistance to evacuees who are not in shelters. We have a phase one project 
which is already being implemented, which started almost immediately, the weekend of the first eruption. And this project is focused on the immediate needs of our evacuees, with particular attention to those evacuees outside of the government shelters. As we all know, those at the shelters are getting, you know, sufficient attention and as in normal fashion for the trust and the foundation, we try to provide assistance in areas of need or as they say where the gap exists. As such, our focus is on the evacuees outside of the shelters. Uh, at this point, we are paying particular attention to, as I said, the immediate needs, which includes food, water, toiletries. Um, we're even trying to get masks, uh, baby supplies. We're trying to also get some mattresses. But uh, again, we are trying to synchronize this to ensure that there is no duplication because we are all aware of the outpouring worldwide of assistance that's coming in to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, which we are truly grateful as of Incension people. So the Mustique verb, we are just going to try to work along with other volunteer groups. We are going to try and see where assistance is needed. So we're not working, you know, in isolation. We are going to be working in tandem with the government and all other volunteer groups and provide assistance and support and commendation to the Musty Company uh, uh, throughout St. Vincent and the Grenadines. They are known for their expertise and capabilities, um, uh, you know, top of the line management and that would show in itself with the execution of phase one of our assistance. So at this point in time, we are in the immediate phase of delivering food packages, which contains grocery materials, um, food supplies, and toiletries. We do have our IT team immediately formed a database, and we do have a online fillable form we are in the process of getting a Facebook page and Instagram page where we will post this form. But in the interim, we have been emailing this form out to, we have emailed it out to all the principals at the schools, um, emailed it to our Mustique staff. We are getting it out there to ground, um, groups on the ground. So please, we implore everyone who has received this Google link to access that form to please provide it to evacuees so that they can fill the form and we will, it will be immediately sent into our database. Now, as I said, this initial phase, we are focusing on evacuees who are outside of the shelters. Those who have um, been taken in by friends and families, but we can all appreciate that even if a friend or family offer you a place to stay, stay it does not mean that they can afford to take care of you. So that's where Mustique Wolf is going to step in to try and assist because it's the hardest thing for a friend or family to tell an evacuee that you need to go to a shelter because I can't feed you. So this is what we're focusing on at this point in time. So at this point we're looking at targeting 5,000 evacuees. Uh, our budget for phase one, it's two million EC dollars. And um, from that, we're looking at distributing food to 5,000 families. And the budget for the food is one million EC. So we're looking at an average of $200 per family. This is for the first two weeks that we're looking at. So then we're gonna assess, see what's happening, and then determine how we move forward because as we're all aware, there are large shipments of assistance on, we, on its way to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So of course, we would want to ensure that, you know, what finances is raised by our fundraising is um, targeting the areas of most need. So we will assess and if we determine that, 
you know our initial phase the phase one is then being taken care of you know by all the help that's coming in then we will try to focus our finances on the long term of the rebuilding we're doing it in quadrants and when i say quadrants we all know that the country is cut in half so it's quadrants of the lower half and we're doing what we refer to the upper leeward right which is like Leiu barley we're doing what we refer to the lower leeward which is um like camden park um rockies those areas along the suburbs of town uh we're then going on the windward side which is like we're doing along the areas of argyle right and however far up we can get uh, because again it's it's all about you know where the vehicles where they can get to and then we're doing a lower um windward side we are also trying to look at because of the access by road we are also trying to look at possibly getting assistance you know um, via boat possibly up the web um, the leeward side but that depends on you know the availability of a location to dock to have those supplies distributed Malcolm said evacuees must be shown care and love and not just given food and other supplies. She also shed more light on a database being created to ensure those in need can receive assistance. As a nation, this is each and every one of us in St. Vincent. We have to focus on helping our evacuees, not just with giving them material things because that's the easiest part. Material things are going to come into the country. We have worldwide assistance. But what, as a Vincentian nation, we have to give our evacuees is the care and the love and ensure that they feel taken care of and ensure that, you know, they're displaced and they're made to feel most at home in the strange locations that they are. So, you know, each and every one of us as Vincentian have to ensure that we have our brothers and sisters who have been displaced. As we speak, my assistant is working on getting that um, loaded onto the website. But as I said, we are working along with a designer to get a Facebook page and Instagram, Instagram page up and running because we know a lot of people, you know, are more familiar with those platforms. We are also in the process of WhatsApping it out to individuals. So, uh, and we have it, we're sending it to the volunteer groups that we're collaborating with. Uh, the reason is that, you know, each group would have their contact group. So once we send that out, it's then, you know, it's a ripple effect. And we're also, this database that was created, it's going to be a very useful tool, not just for the immediate, but for the long term. Because once we gather the information, and even if we have persons who are in the shelters sending in the information it will be sorted because as i said we have to uh, focus on the scope of phase one but when we start to look at phase two you know as a country this is not just the mustic Wolf initiative those persons in the shelters are going to have to be included in that assistance also so the database it's not just for mustic Wolf but we are creating it to also share with other organizations, including the government, uh, in terms of tracking subsequently, you know, the assistance and how it is going to be disseminated to those most in need. Reporting for the API, I am Barbin Oliver. Up next on Iron Government, Venezuelan ship brings relief supplies.
Coast Marine and Coastal Rehabilitation Adaptation Project. Located south of the island, extending to over five bays, White Sands, Kanash, Kaliakwa, Villa, and Indian Bay. Let's improve aquatic life. A message from the National Parks, Rivers, and Beaches Authority and Partners. Thanks for staying with us. In a show of true solidarity, the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, Cuba, and St. Lucia joined hands and hearts to bring relief supplies and humanitarian assistance to the government and people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The API's Hala John has more in the following report. As the saying goes, a friend in need is a friend indeed. Since the explosive eruption of the Lasso Frere volcano, the outpouring of support from our friends and allies has been tremendous. In another show of profound solidarity, the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela and the Republic of Cuba have partnered to provide assistance to Vincentians in this time of great trial. On Wednesday, April 21, 2021, the Bolivarian Navy ship AB Guajira arrived in Port Kingstown for the second time, again loaded with relief supplies from St. Lucia and Cuba. In addition to many food items and over 300,000 liters of fresh water, a team of Cuban medical professionals with varying specialities arrived to provide support to the local health services. On hand for the arrival of the ship was the Honorable Frederick Stevenson, Minister with Responsibility for the Public Service, Consumer Affairs and Sports, who expressed his gratitude for this heartfelt gesture. I'm very delighted to be here on the Port Kingston where we have just seen the arrival of the Venezuelan Coast Guard from, from Cuba with a stop in St. Lucia, bringing here to St. Vincent and the Grenadines quite a number of, of items including water tanks from, from St. Lucia, uh, quite a number of food, su food supplies, rice, dry goods, corned beef, staples, for, 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 and, and also medicine, and I believe on the vessel also, Excellency, there, there's some medical personnel from Cuba who have arrived here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines to offer assistance to the Ministry of Health. The Venezuelans who were one of the first set of persons to, to visit St. Vincent and the Grenadines and to offer their solidarity as a uh, minister of the government and, and I would say on behalf of the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines I'd like to express our sincerest gratitude to the, the commander of the, of the vessel that is here from, from Venezuela that has been doing tremendous work um, in ensuring that the supplies that most of the supplies or many of the supplies that we need here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines um, can be brought into, into the country via, via vessels. And, and um, I want to, to thank our brother from the Venezuelan Embassy and the staff of the Venezuelan Embassy who are here with us this afternoon for their continued support and solidarity with St. Vincent and the Grenadines at this critical time of the Lassifre volcanic eruptions. Head of Mission for the Venezuelan Embassy, Francisco Perez, said that this show of support has come directly from President Nicolas Maduro, who stands committed to providing assistance to this country at this difficult time. President Maduro, uh, uh, the, from the first time that uh, he listened that the volcano was uh, erupting, ordered uh, the uh, brother and the navy to come here and uh, bring all the support that they need. Uh, the vessel, as uh, the minister say, is going to be here until the Prime Minister Raul Gonzalez need. And the idea that uh, also through the Alba Bank uh, is, is that the vessel can be uh, as a maritime, mar maritime bridge between the island uh, uh, that need to send uh, their support and the donation to St. Vincent. So this first, this, this very first uh, uh, trip was to St. Lucia, but if the Prime Minister need to uh, pick some donation from Grenada or from other, other, another country, the vessel uh, and the, 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 the commander have the instruction to uh, follow the, the need of uh, the, the Prime Minister Raul Gonzalez. That is uh, something that 
um, we are very proud to collaborate with the, the people of St. Vincent with this uh, uh, vessel and the support also uh, our brother from Cuba uh, that uh, the ambassador here our, our brother uh, Jose Manuel Leiva Ventura um, can explain also what the, uh, the help uh, of uh, Cuba uh, that bring uh, in the vessel because it's also the, the bridge between Cuba, uh, San Lucia and San Lucia to here. Uh, they do doing a very hard effort take the stuff, the supply to San Lucia and from San Lucia in the vessel. So uh, we will continue uh, um, doing this, this uh, uh, bridge, this job with the vessel of the Navy uh, of Venezuela with the commander. Meanwhile, Minister of Health, Wellness and the Environment, the Honorable Sinclair Prince, gave details on the team of medical doctors that arrived on the ship. What is absolutely important is that we have, coming from Cuba also, six doctors. They are on the boat, six doctors, six specialist doctors in areas of obstet um, obstetrics, uh, gynecology, uh, pediatrics, um, uh, uh, born, born trauma, etc., all of that. They are specialists because we want to respond to this situation, this disaster situation um, here because we have already two problems. We have the COVID still on our hands and also we have the, the, the response that we have to do to, for, the, um, for, the, for the volcanic eruption. So Cuba has sent us doctors and medicines and equipment uh, with respect to those specialities and we have um, also supplies from them and from St. Lucia. So we thank the, the Cubans, we thank the St. Lucians, we thank the, the, um, the Venezuelans on this triple solidarity, triple level of solidarity to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Cuban ambassador to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, His Excellency Jose Ventura, reaffirmed his country's commitment to providing assistance during this time of national disaster. Como explicaba, es nuestra pequeña eh, contribución a tratar de eh, ayudar al pueblo it's vicentino en people. estos momentos golpeados por el volcán La Sufriera. Very very hard moment from the full severe volcano eruption. Eh, forma parte de la voluntad de amistad y hermandad que siempre nos ha unido a Cuba the will that the, the will of the Cuban y a San Vicente y las Granadinas. Nosotros nosotros no damos lo que nos sobra. We couldn't give what we will have too much. Nosotros compartimos lo que tenemos. We share what we have. Eh, nosotros, nuestra ayuda, eh, nuestra solidaridad, ha estado aquí antes del volcán, con la presencia de los colaboradores de la salud y la construcción. Our health and our solidarity has been here for a long time, since the brigade, the Cuban brigade, the medical brigade, has been here, here for a long time. Es decir, estábamos antes de la erupción del volcán, seguimos ahora aquí y so con... we, we will hear before the volcano eruption we are still here and go on with the Q, y with se, the y seguiremos people. estando aquí and we stay here helping the es people. nuestra forma de ser consecuente It's our way to be con, nue con nuestros libertadores It's our freedom people con el espíritu solidario de Bolívar the solidarity spirit of Bolívar de los héroes latinoamericanos the Latin American heroes de Sucre, de Sucre, Chatoyer, Chatoyer, Martí, Martí, Chávez y Chávez Fidel. And Fidel. Como dijo nuestro general de ejército, said our general, el Caribe puede contar siempre con Cuba. Caribe can always count with Cuba. Los vicentinos, Vicentian people, el hermano pueblo de San Vicente y las Granadinas y su Vicentin, gobierno también siempre podrá contar con Cuba. always can count with Cuba. Also present for the ship's arrival was Director of the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, Michelle Forbes, who had nothing but appreciation for this collaborative effort. Well, it's always good to have the solidarity of our, our brothers and sisters in the Caribbean, Venezuela and Cuba in particular. Um, during emergencies, I've always supported St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Hurricane Tomas in 2010, the 2013 floods, the 2016 floods. So they have always been our partners. And at this stage in our relief effort, it's really um, pleasing or happy to have, the, have another supply of um, relief items that can be distributed to the, those who have been affected. So we are quite happy that these governments have 
contributed to our relief efforts, our ongoing relief efforts. We don't know how long it's going to go on and we need, um, we're really thankful for this. More aid arrives from the private sector in Martinique, this story coming up after the break. Diabetes is among the top three leading causes of death. Are you living with diabetes? If so, you may be at risk for developing complications, especially during this COVID pandemic. Let's tackle this problem by complying with taking your medication, increasing your physical activities, increasing eating a balanced and nutritious diet, checking your feet as foot care is important, and contacting your healthcare provider. Remember, diabetes can lead to blindness, amputation, and numerous harmful and life-threatening effects. Protect yourself. Know your numbers. Heart's Movement SVG reminds you to love your body and treat it right. Your health is shared responsibility. Welcome back. In times of disaster around the world, agencies and countries readily step in to send humanitarian assistance and aid. As such, the Rotary Clubs of Martinique and St. Vincent and the Grenadines recently joined hands to bring aid to this country following the explosive eruptions of the La Sofria volcano and consequent evacuation of residents to temporary shelters. Yinka Goodluck has the story. Harry Truda, captain of the Lady Debbie, departed Martinique last evening en route to Port Kingstown, loaded with relief supplies in aid of persons displaced by the eruption of the Lasso Frey volcano. Captain Truda talks with the API about his experiences in sailing from Martinique to Port Kingstown. He says that he was delighted to do this, as this could have been his home country and they could have needed our help. We sail from uh, last night. We depart from Martinique um, around 700 on uh, all day. Yesterday was a loading day for us with uh, support from the early association like the Rotary, like the government. We receive also uh, the support from the, uh, the, um, the oil field uh, department from Martinique. So we received 16,000 of fuel, 60,000 fuel to, to reach there and we get the support also from the private uh, people. So all this is, uh, is the, like a solidarity movement, like I said, i proud, really proud to be a part of this team to help St. Vincent today because as we know in the Caribbean, the situation can happen to everybody. So that is a great thing to be a part to help St. Vincent today. Rotarians Dr. Francois Trucho and Annette Mark speaks with the API about their roles in these efforts. Um, this is not a, a Trucho thing, this is not a Marx thing, this is a nation thing. Um, the people that have been less affected are uh, helping effortlessly uh, around the clock. The people that have been affected as well um, do, un do appreciate and do understand um, how difficult it is. And being part of that movement is just, it's just amazing. Um, this is not this is not a burden. This is almost like a like a, like a privilege to have been granted the right to um, assist in a in terms in terms of crisis. As far as the plans are going for distribution, um, we have an amazing amount of um, I, I, I like that I like to call the foot soldiers, people you don't see, people that don't that don't go in front of the cameras, people that don't that don't make the calls. You just tell them, hey, we need to get a box up to Chateau Belair. All you hear is a clicking of the engine, and they're ready to go. And um, this is what makes this effort absolutely amazing. We have a um, big solidarity movement, but it's not only institutional. We have a lot of private individuals that are doing that out at Northern Ireland. And we got um, seven catamarans so far that have sailed down the Grenadines um, to, to St. Vincent, fully loaded with goods, um, bottles, water, food, canned food, baby diapers, and all that sort of stuff. And then we set up another small warehouse, um, which um, we have, we prepare in boxes and we try to concentrate with families at this stage because, I mean, obviously it's not the same quantity of food. And then again, 
um, small other associations come here, pick up boxes and distribute to families that have um, welcoming some of the, the, the displaced um, habitants from the, northern, uh, from the north of the island. And this is how we keep, we keep that going. You were asking us for the plans. We try to get as much support and as much donation we can. And we, as well, modify the list of needs as it comes. So because those guys are coming back on Friday, if we have a lack of inhalers, um, baby diapers, uh, hygiene product, we just call them and say, hey, go to the supermarket, buy, buy this, that, that, that. So we're receiving what really we need. Um, for the needy people. We know you in the capacity of Invest SVG, but today you are wearing another hat. Can you tell us about that and how you became involved in this? Okay, so I am the president of the Rotary Club of St. Vincent. Um, I've been a Rotarian for the last, what, six, seven years. Um, it, Rotary is a service club and it is um, it's just a passion of mine to just give back and I voluntarily do this, I enjoy it, I enjoy making people happy, I enjoy serving persons and this is being part of Rotary is now a part of my life and my DNA. Um, we are here, we, the clubs though in St. Vincent, there are three clubs, there's the Rotary Club of St. Vincent, the Rotary Club of St. Vincent South and there's the Rotaract, the Rotaract Club of Kingstown and we are working together in this crisis. We are one family and we are working together. We are cooperating together to ensure that persons uh, receive much needed supply. And that cooperation as one family is even being extended regionally and worldwide. Rotarians from all over are contacting us, as um, ADG Francois has said. And um, you know we're just happy for the love and outpouring and the support from throughout the world, even from other private sector entities. We have um, received a, the, a, the donation of a warehouse, well, as long as we need it from uh, Mr. Osvera, who we, again, public, uh, private sector persons coming together to work with us, uh, who we are, we are eternally grateful to. And um, so most of our supplies go to that warehouse and it's distributed from there. So tons of water we're getting and the supplies that we're getting go to that warehouse. and. As um, ADG Francois said, our foot soldiers come, we hear, we, we get a list of who needs what and our foot soldiers come and they go out no matter where, no matter how, no matter what time and they distribute for us. We also um, have a, um, a disaster relief fund which we have set up, which was set up way, way a long, quite a long time ago. And um, so persons who don't, who feel that it's much easier to send, um, send funds rather than goods can also donate to that disaster relief fund. And I know at, at this moment, I really want to just recognize the Rotary Club of BVI that has raised over 100,000 US through a telethon. And I think there was one yesterday also in Trinidad. I, we, haven't, we haven't gotten a feedback on that as yet. So, I mean, again, the support comes not just through not just, to go, not just through goods, but also through financial support from, from Rotary, from private sector, from everybody that, just, that, that, that feels for what is happening here in St. Vincent. The government and people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines thanks the Rotary Club and the government of Martinique for their continued support. Reporting for the API, I am Yenka Chambers. And that's how we end the API's Iron Government. Thank you for viewing. If you've missed any of our past programs, you can catch these on our YouTube or Facebook pages at API, all caps, the Agency for Public Information, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, or on our website at www.api.gov.vc. Join us again on Thursday at 8 p.m. Until next time, I am Keisha Woodley. Do have a good evening.